Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about using back edge cuts in your fighting. Okay. Uh, now I've talked about Winker House and uh, uh, Wessel House uh, in other videos, right? But in this video, I'm going to talk less about how to do the cut and more of how to do it in your actual fighting. Okay. So, uh, you know, of the two uh, cuts that I've referenced, the uh, the, the, uh, the Winker How and the Wessel How, there's there's not that m much information about how to do it. Um, with the Winker How, um, basically we see one image where there's a cut like that. Okay, so it's a high cut like that coming in at, at an angle. All right. Um, now with the with the Messer, uh, basically the back side of the blade is pretty much blunt, even though this one has some edge up here. The back side is blunt. But even with the blunt blade, right, I got a pretty clean piece of wood over here, okay, you can see how that bites into the wood, you know, simply because, you know, even on a blunt blade, you still have got a lot of concentration on the edge here, right, so um, as you can see, it bit pretty good into the wood right there, actually, let me bring this camera a little bit closer so you guys can see it. Okay, so right there, you can see the cut I was able to make into that wood with a blunt blade, okay. Okay, so um, you know, so that's that's the that's the uh, the Winker How as we're shown in the manual, uh, and the other cut that I'm familiar with um, is the uh, the Wessel How, which is basically you know a cut, you know a downward cut, and then basically it's an upward cut that follows the same uh, the same line, right? So you're coming down and then up like that. Um, so with the single-handed cut, uh, the way that looks is basically I would cut down and then come up and cut like that right you can see how that made a much deeper cut uh because this this has more of an edge on it uh and yeah I'm, let me show you guys a close up of that and i really wasn't even throwing it that fast all right so right there you can see the cut i made into the wood just now right without even throwing a really fast shot okay so let's really quickly talk about how these cuts work um I, like i said i've covered this other, in other videos so i won't go too deep into this so basically if i was making a true edge cut basically i'm cutting straight out there my hand is coming straight across like that right so that's how i'm making my true edge cut well right now what i'm doing is instead of aiming it there i'm aiming it about six inches to the side so instead of aiming it there right at the camera i'm aiming it a little off to the side there and as i throw the sword out when the sword meets, reaches its full extension, it's got no place to go. So the centripetal motion just basically, you know, rolls the sword over, right? So basically, if I hold, if I hold this like this, as I come around, at some point the blade naturally wants to roll over. Okay. So if I'm standing like this, it's going to want to roll over like that. If I'm leading with this foot, it's going to want to roll over in this position. So depending on how my body is oriented, like if I'm like this. It's going to want to roll over there. So I can determine where this rolls over simply by shifting my body, okay? But it's, it's a, it's a, um, let me get a buckle you guys can see it. Um, I'm still able to do this, you know, while protecting my hand, right? So, so depending on where I'm at, you know, and I can change the angles. I can angle down, I can angle up, okay? Um, so, so that's how that cut works. Like I said, I covered this in other videos. In this video, I want to talk about how I use it. Okay, um, because like I said, the uh, the the manuals sh mention the cuts, but they really don't tell us that much about how to use these uh, in practical fighting. It, practically speaking, people had to use had to use these type of back edge cuts. Um, you know, the the swords, medieval swords, had you know were, were double sided. Um, it takes effort to put two sides on the blade, right? So if you're going to put two sides on the blade, um, you're doing it for a reason. And if, you know, and if it's there, you're going to use it. You're going to find ways to use it. So if you give me, let's say, uh, any weapon, right? Give me, a, give me a, a hammer that you know, or a war or, or so, some some type of a hammer that has a spike on one side and a, a flat, smooth surface on the other side. You know, I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, okay, great. This side has a spike. This side is flat. How am I going to use it? In, in what situations is each side going to be uh, most effective, right? So the same thing with the blade. People are going to look at the sword. They're going to say, oh, okay, this thing has two sides on it. How can I use this most effectively? How can I make, you know, this sword work for me? Um, 
All right, so so that's the approach that I think people took with, with, in, with gen, in general, all weapons. So you look at the weapon, you figure out what you can possibly do with that weapon uh, to make it work for you. Um, so now we're going to talk about, let's talk about sword and buckler, right? With the sword and buckler, you know, how, how do I use it, all right? So basically, typically when people fight with the sword and buckler, they're either like this or they're holding it like this. They're, they're kind of keeping their hands together somehow. Right, they're, they're guarding their hands, they're closing that line over there. Um, and usually when we think of, uh, of, of, of defense and offense, we think of four quadrants, right? So, the four quadrants, right? You got one, two, three, four, right? Four quadrants. Well, here's the thing. These back edge cuts open up two additional quadrants, okay? So now instead of having just one, two, three, four, you also have five and six, okay? I have two additional quadrants uh, because now, instead of just attacking here, 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 okay? I can also attack there, I can attack there, okay? Now, the effect of this is, to the person that's blocking, is if they know that I'm gonna be turning the blade over and attacking from a slightly different angle, that forces them to block a little bit wider. All right, they have to block a little bit wider. So it doesn't matter if that person uses back edge cuts, right? Um, you know, they might be using, let's say, uh, um, a single sided sword, right? They might be using a back sword. They might be using a, a falchion. You know, they might be they might be using a single sided sword. Um, and they're in their training uh, or in their sword fighting philosophy, they don't believe in back edge cuts. That's perfectly fine. If they're fighting me, they still have to block against those cuts because as you guys saw, you have to block this because I can throw a cut and shit, I just cut my rope. I really didn't want to do that, but anyway, I just cut my rope. Uh, and I went through the rope and I still made a little bit more of a cut there. Uh, but the point is that, that, uh, that even if your opponent does not believe in back edge cuts, they still have to block him, right? So that forces them to basically, you know, somehow or other, they got to block quadrant five and quadrant six, okay? So that's the, the, the advantage of these back edge cuts. It forces your opponent to block two additional areas that they would otherwise not have to block. So with the sword and buckler, right? Basically, if they got the buckler here, the place I'm usually targeting is the elbow right here because I can throw this, I can go around, you know, just around the edge of the buckler here and I can attack the elbow there, or if they're blocking low like that, using that back edge of the cut, I can I can, I can still get to the leg, or if they're blocking their head high like this or like that, I can still roll my sword over and make that back edge of the cut. So that forces them to bring their block, uh, basically another six to eight inches, maybe 12 inches, depending on how deep I throw it, um, or, or how wide I throw it, right? Because I can throw it you know, at distance, where basically I'm just turning over like this, or if I find myself in close, like let's say, um, you know, uh, uh, th these back edge cuts are really a good uh, counter to grappling. So let's say somebody jumps in on me, all right? They're basically trying to stuff me. Well, basically I can basically throw a really wide cut. Now, yeah, obviously in this position, my hand's coming outside my buckler, but they're on top of me. They're not gonna be able to, you know, if they're, if they're trying to grapple with me, they're not gonna be uh, trying to cut my arm. So if they're grappling on me, if they're trying to jump on me, you know, I can throw wide there, I can throw wide there, whereas at distance, I'm throwing, you know, all tighter shots um, where I'm, I'm protecting my hand. Okay, so, so, so that's how I use the, um, uh, the back edge cut um, with, the, with the sword and buckler. Now with the shield, let's put this down. Okay, with the shield, it becomes really, you know, um, a really useful tool because obviously with the shield there's more defense right so with the shield I'm basically trying to get around the person's uh, defense so uh, I've, I've done other videos where I talked about um, you know how these heater shields are, are used uh, and basically with the heaters I'm making minimal motions basically I'm using this corner to block my head okay that corner there to block my legs that corner back there is catching any stuff that's coming around the back, all right? So I'm, I'm, I'm making really minimal motions with this. Um, so so basically with the, with the sword, we're trying to get this shield to move just a little bit, right? Because if you throw a shot here, I have to 
bring the shield a little bit that way, that opens up something. On this side, uh, if you're throwing a cut here, I have to move it this way. If you're throwing a wrap, I have to really bring that corner or that corner up and back. So again, we're creating a fourth and fifth um, um, quadrant, right? Because as the shield is positioned there, all right, from there, that's blocked, there, that's blocked. But if I throw that back edge cut, you can see how I can come around that my corner and his corner and attack that corner. I can attack there. I can come around that corner, attack the leg like that. Uh, you know, of course, then you can add a little bit of movement. I can step a little bit to the side. I can basically, you know, as I step here, I can come in under the shield like that, attack there. So it, it offers me um, other lines of attack that force my opponent to block, okay? So uh, basically all advanced fighting is about misdirection. I need to bring their, um, uh, their defense to one area so I can attack uh, somebody, someplace else. So uh, basically if I throw a shot to this side over here, you know, that's gonna get the shield to move this way, right? Which is obviously opening up something on that side. So the way I fight this, right? If I'm gonna throw, let's say, a deep, um, cut to the left side, whatever you want to call a, a, a left side middle how or left side resort shower on that side, that's going to get the shield to come over that way. All right. And usually I can follow that up with a cut to this side, but maybe this is a person that is really quick to come back. All right. So I can follow it up with a deeper back edge cut from there. I can throw that back edge cut a little, a little further around. Okay. Or I can start off with it. Right. So if I start off my shot with a back edge cut, back edge cut like that, you're never going to hit uh, anybody other than a brand new fighter, um, you know, with, with a back edge cut that you open up with. Okay, so uh, it's not intended to actually hit. It's intended to get them to panic, to get them to throw their shield back to cover that corner there. So the way I would do is I would throw that back edge cut and then from there quickly follow around to that side. Okay, um, same thing with the leg, right? I can basically throw the back edge cut there, you know, get them to pull that shield to the side or maybe step to the side a little bit over here get them to throw that shield, you know, bring that corner that way, right? And then from there, I can come back around to the other side, okay? So, so, here's, so that's the important thing I'm trying to bring out here uh, about these back edge cuts, uh, wicker house, whistle house, uh, whatever other names they have uh, in different times and places, because as you travel around Europe, you're gonna, you know, they, they call different things, different things at different times and different places. Um, but the important thing is that this back edge cut, or in general, a back edge cut has the, uh, has the possibility of opening up two other uh, quadrants, or two other lines of attack. So, you know, you have the traditional one, two, three, four, the back edge cuts open up five and six, and it doesn't matter if they actually hit anything, right? The fact that you're throwing it means they gotta block it, right? So if they're gonna block here, stuff's opening up over there. So it doesn't matter whether the opponent believes in it, all right, they still have to block it. Um, so, so that's that's the value of these back edge cuts, uh, and it, and they don't necessarily have to kill every time. In fact, you know, um, most of the shots that you're gonna throw, especially against a big shield, most of them, you know, especially the first shot, it's gonna get blocked. All right, the guy's got a big shield. He knows, you know, if he knows how to fight, he's gonna block the first, second, maybe even the third shot. Um, so every shot that you're throwing, regardless of where you're throwing it is a setup for your second or your third shot. Okay, so the same thing goes with these back edge cuts. You're basically moving the person around, trying to get them to move the, the defense around, trying to get them to over block, to over commit to a block, uh, so that you can attack them somewhere else. So uh, I hope you guys found this uh, video on back edge cuts useful. Um, if you're not a member of the channel, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys soon.